Utah is no stranger to wildfires, but what many people don't realize is how long it takes to restore the landscape after. So while wildfires can be beneficial by creating a fresh start for wildlife habitats, it can take decades for the land to fully recover on its own. That's why habitat biologists are getting their hands dirty to help speed up that process. So joining me now to talk more about that is Habitat Conservation Coordinator Daniel Eddington. And thank you so much for being here, Daniel. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So my first question for you is, how do you go about rehabilitating the landscape there? One of the first things we typically do is we'll put out some seed uh, to try to help stabilize some of the soils uh, from eroding down into a lot of the streams. Um, that's some of the initial stuff that we try to do just to give some of those grasses a, a kickstart in, in growing and getting that soil to be stable. And can you explain further just how that reseeding process works after a wildfire? Because I know you guys often do that. What goes into something like that? Yeah, we have a, through our Utah Watershed Restoration Initiative, we bring a lot of partners together um, from all the different agencies, uh, nonprofit groups, private landowners, um, and develop a plan of how to rehab the area. And once that plan's been developed, a lot of times that seed is flown on with uh, airplanes and helicopters and some kind of a mechanical equipment to try to incorporate the seed into the soil a little bit. Okay, and are there other things that you can do to restore the landscape aside from the reseeding process? Yeah, so a lot of times when we have fires, uh, we tend to have some uh, rain events that can bring debris flows down into a lot of the streams and into a lot of the creeks. And so lately we've been doing a lot of restoration work where we come in and put in what we call a beaver analog uh, dam and it's just a simple little structure that helps try to catch a lot of that sediment before it ends up clear down into our, our creeks and our streams. Okay and so is there anything you shouldn't be doing when you guys are working on those restoration projects? Yeah I mean it's good to stay out of those areas there's a lot of things that can happen trees can fall down or just even the disturbance to uh, the new restoration work that has just happened so staying out of those areas being careful not to trample on any of the, the disturbed areas. And I know the Sealy Fire, it broke out nearly 10 years ago. Where are you guys at in terms of restoring the landscape there? Because it seems like it's been a long time. Is that usually, you know, how long this process takes? Yeah, so it typically takes, you know, several years before the soils uh, kind of really stabilize themselves. And once that kind of stabilizes, we're able to go in and, and do some restoration work. Um, a lot of the different uh, fires can actually be very beneficial to a lot of wildlife habitats. Our mule deer, our elk really thrive on the new grasses and flowers and trees and aspens that have all come back. Um, but we've also seen a lot of fish kill in some of our streams because of that ash and sediment. And so our biologist has been doing restoration work for the last several years to try to get fish back into that stream, especially Huntington Creek and Price River. And um, I'm glad to say as of today, we're actually seeing 100% of those streams have fish in them, they're fishable. And our biologists have been releasing fish in there for the last couple of years. Um, both Colorado cutthroats and brown trout. Well, that is very exciting news. Is there anything else you want to get out there about this important topic that people might not know? The only thing I would say is, you know, we do need fires in our landscape. Um, we don't. We hate to see these huge, large, catastrophic fires, but a lot of our fires, forests do have a lot of beetle kill, and we do need to see some prescribed fire in those to help uh, reduce a lot of those larger catastrophic fires. Such an important topic. Well, thank you so much for your time, Daniel. And if you all at home want more information about this, just head to our website at abc4.com slash GMU. Thank you again, Daniel. Thank you.